So everyone, uh, I've been working in IT for about 10 years now and over the past three I've been diving deeper into automation. I spent a fair amount of time studying Python, uh, PowerShell, and a few other technologies, but nothing really came close to Power Automate in terms of ease of use and the, the sheer speed of pumping out a working prototype. Um, hopefully you learn something throughout this process. You'll need access to Microsoft Forms, Power Automate, and the Graph API. Uh, with that said, let's dive in. All right, uh, here we are in the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. We're going to start by going to App Registrations, and we are going to register a new app. Um, you want to name the app, something like create user uh, automation, and you want to make sure accounts in this organizational directory only is selected, um, depending on your needs. Uh, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. Um, the first step is creating a secret by clicking on this link here. Uh, creating the secret is pretty straightforward. Um, you just click new client secret and you come up with a name for that secret. So create user secret. Um, I set it to 12 months. Uh, recommended is six months, but you'll have to create a new secret after that period of time. Uh, you need to make sure you're copying the value of the secret and not the secret ID. So there are three things we need to copy here. Uh, so let's make sure we get the value copied. And then we're going to go back to overview, which displays all the other information. We're going to paste that in a notepad I have going on in the background. Uh, we are also going to copy the tenant ID here. We'll need that later on for the flow. <coughs> and we are going to copy the client ID as well. So after we have all that information, uh, there's just one more step uh, involved with creating the app here. Uh, we want to go to API permissions on the left and we want to add a set of permissions. This is for the Microsoft Graph API. Uh, you want to click on application permissions on the right. Uh, search for user. That'll make the process a little easier. Expand user and make sure you click, what are we clicking here? Uh, click user.readwrite.all and we need to add one more set of permissions for the directory expand directory select directory dot read write dot all <coughs> and then there's just one more step you need to make sure you grant admin consent for Roman text or whatever the name of your organization is uh, this website shows you what permissions you need to create a user via the Graph API. So our application is set, permissions are set, and now we are granting admin consent for the organization. <coughs> so the application is uh, set up and ready to go. So now you want to go over to forms.office.com and you want to create a new form. I'm just going to copy an old form that I have set up already, but uh, creating these forms, it, it's very straightforward. Um, it's just a few clicks to create the questions that you want, and then whoever's filling out the form fills in the data. But this is usually what I, how I have it set up. I have a first name, 
last name, the manager, their, their cell phone number, title. Um, eventually, all this information will get pulled from the form, and that information will be used to create the user. Uh, click Collect Responses, and then copy the link to the form. That way you can uh, give it to HR or whatever department is going to be filling out the form. So at that point, um, we have the form filled out. Uh, the last thing we need to do is set up the slow in Power Automate. So you want to click on My Flows on the left, and you're probably you're going to create a new flow. I am just going to copy an already existing flow. Uh, it's only three steps involved, so you really just need to drag and drop those three steps that you're about to see to uh, copy this. So we'll go into the flow and briefly go over how it's all set up. I'm just turning off an old flow there and we'll eventually turn on this new one. Uh, as you can see, uh, we when a new response is submitted uh, using the new form that we just built, which is called New Hire 3, that's the trigger. So when a new response is submitted to that form, we're going to trigger this flow. It's now going to pull the, the data from that form and at that point we can start working with that data. Uh, so this is an HTTP GET request. Um, this is how I was first exposed to APIs. There are a lot of interesting things you can do with this, but you just want to make sure everything matches up. You are posting data to the Graph API. Make sure the, the URI matches up there. Headers, contact, content dash type, application slash JSON, and this is the JSON code that you you want in the body of your HTTP request. Um, I'll include a link that shows how everything can be formatted. Um, you obviously can customize this however you want. All right, so we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna punch in our uh, secret value, our tenant ID, and our client ID. And uh, now we have all the information that we need in our flow. We're going to save our flow, make sure it's turned on, and there are no errors in the flow, and you should be ready to use it. <clears throat> so we're going to head on over to our Microsoft form and start filling it out and everything should be working just let me check this air here it hasn't been run in 28 days that's because i cloned it so that is not an issue <coughs> so let's head over to our form <coughs> excuse me uh, we will fill out all the fields here whatever you want to set it to for the manager, cell phone number, personal email, superman at gmail.com, that works. And now we're going to submit the form. All right, looks good. Let's take a look at the flow. At the bottom, you're probably gonna have to refresh. It looks like it succeeded. Let's head on back to portal.azure.com, Azure Active Directory. Let's go to our users and let's try to find Superman. It may take about a minute for it to populate in AAD. And there you go. So you can see the man at romantech.com um, users active passwords already set um, everything should be ready to go 
All right, that's it. In about 10 minutes, you can almost fully automate the onboarding process. Now, instead of IT creating users, you can give HR access to this form and they can do it for you. Uh, I also usually include another step in this flow to create an email with the results from the form. So it creates a ticket and you also want to make sure that that step happens before creating the user. Um, that's so if at any point in time when the user is getting created, if that process fails, then the ticket still gets created. Um, the only other failures I've seen is if uh, a space gets included when they're filling out the form, that can cause the, the flow to fail too. Uh, there are a few things you can do to prevent that from happening. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, uh, definitely let me know. and. I hope you learned something. Thank you.